What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 12th C++ tutorial and you're like alright WTF where is the code? Well before I get to the tutorial I want to show you guys this right here. Some chick believe it or not posted this picture on my forum today and I thought it was hilarious so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, if you understand the joke behind this then you're gonna think it's hilarious and if you don't quite understand it yet then you probably will in a few years but anyways there you go guys again like I said some people are gonna understand it some people are not so uh, if you do enjoy anyways back to the tutorial in this tutorial we're gonna be covering a new type of data and for once it actually is not a type of number so in the last couple tutorials we covered int, floats, doubles, pretty much all different types of numbers but let's get into something a little bit more interesting I'm talking about letters, words, sentences something that's going to be very useful because when we build programs we're going to be wanting to get the user's name and address these all take letters we'll save the numbers for important stuff like the most important thing of all their credit card number but anyways for now let's concentrate on letters words sentences trust me it's gonna be awesome so let me take a deep breath in and out alright now whenever we're working with letters we need to use a special type of data and that's C-H-A-R it stands for character and this can go from anywhere from one character to like a T to an entire paragraph so care or char some people call it is the type of data when working with characters now in this store I'm gonna show you guys you know not just one character how you can store but multiple characters in since each individual letter is its own type of data what can we use to tie a bunch of these types together excuse me not types but a bunch of different pieces of data what have we learned to tie them all together yes if you guessed an array you are correct so let's go ahead and make an array called tuna and set it equal to the value of five so now we have an array called tuna which pretty much stores multiple variables and we set it equal to the type of char or care. I'm probably going to say char. This means we can store five variables. Actually, I just got an idea. That means we can store six characters in the array called tuna. So let's go ahead and um, instantiate it, which means create it this way. So let me think of something that takes six characters. B, yeah, nothing exciting, I know. U, C, K, Y. And you were saying, all right, six characters, one, two, three, four, five. All right, Bucky, your name is only five characters. That was a horrible example. Well, it wasn't quite because I have one more character for you that goes at the end, and that's backslash zero. And then let me explain this before I even go any further. Whenever your compiler is working with arrays, or excuse me, an array of characters, the last character you need to put in is backslash zero. For some reason, whoever built the compiler, they pretty much told their compiler, all right, print out all the characters of an array until you get to this special character named backslash zero. This is pretty much our stop sign for our compiler. And this is our way of telling the compiler, all right, stop what you're doing this isn't included it's pretty much of our way of telling you to stop so let's go ahead and print this out right now see out tuna and hopefully it says Bucky and it doesn't print that zero at the end because again that's not part of the array itself it pretty much is just a stop sign so your compiler only sees Bucky and then it stops so now you know that this is actually not a character and this well, I just told you guys like eight times. Hopefully it's stuck in your head by now. Now, if you're saying, all right, Bucky, that is the dumbest thing ever. Well, first of all, don't blame me. I didn't make the compiler. Second of all, you are in luck because I have an even better way of creating an array. So let's go ahead and say we wanted to create an array of characters, but 
we wanted a little bit easier way to do it. Well, let's go ahead and make another array called bacon and go ahead to set it equal to blank square brackets. And if you remember, the square brackets, we usually write how long the array is or how many bytes it's going to take in that square bracket. But whenever we set it equal to an empty bracket and set it equal to some text like um, bacon, mmm, good, something like that, what's going to happen is this. We don't have to give our array an explicit number. What our array is going to do is automatically count the characters, spaces included, and is going to build itself. Never saying, all right, Bucky. Last time you told me that we need to end everything with backslash zero. So I'm guessing we need to end this one with backslash zero as well. Well, check this out. Whenever we build an array like this, whenever we build it, our compiler automatically throws in that backslash zero. So this is pretty much the way I create an arrays. So why did I even show you guys that old way to create an array? an array with uh, the explicit number and the backslash zero well we're gonna come across that later on and I want you guys not to be confused when we do but anyways for the most of our how should I say this for our programs in the future I'm gonna be creating an array like this a character array anyhow so let's go ahead and print this out C out and just go ahead and print out bacon and hopefully we don't get any errors so anyways, you see a successful build as well. So we can do things the first way or the second way. They both give us a successful build. Sometimes the first way is better. Sometimes the second way is better, depending on what kind of programs you're building. But anyways, I'll be showing you these different types of programs later on. Just want to cover the basics right now. And uh, while I have actually three minutes, if I thought that was going to take up most of my time, I'll show you guys one other cool thing that you can do with an arrays that is actually really useful. Let's go ahead and see out. Actually, let's go ahead and just do it right here. See out S T R L E N. And now go ahead and type in the name of your array right here. That wasn't it. Bacon. And let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. The number 15. Pretty cool, huh? Know what it means? Probably not. S-T-R-L-E-N is the function that you pass in an array as a parameter, and it counts how many characters are in that array. So check this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Your spaces count as characters. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So anytime you want to count how many characters are in a character array, this is a real quick and easy way to learn how to do so. But anyways, that isn't even part of the tutorial. I just had uh, some time left over, so I thought I'd show you guys how to do that. And now, whenever we do str len, which stands for string length, by the way, in the upcoming tutorials, I don't have to cover it. So, you know, double whammy. So... That is what I wanted to cover today, the basics of how to create a character array and two different ways of how you can do so. And also, a bonus, S-T-R-A-L-E-N. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be building a program to take all these concepts and tie it together into an actual useful and program that you can actually apply in real life. So anyways, I will leave you guys with this awesome image of well I think some of you guys know what it is I don't think I have to explain this but anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys later